Nearpod allows teachers to create, deliver, interactive slides, interactive videos, gamification activities, while collecting data and insights into student understanding all in one place. There are a lot of ways to get started with creating your Nearpod lessons, and we're just going to take a few steps in creating our own Nearpod lessons using our Nearpod library. The first thing that you would have to do is to go to your lessons. By clicking your lessons tab, it will bring up your lessons as far as your, the lessons that you have taken in, your file folders that you have created, or your library. If you have not created anything, don't worry. Your screen won't look like this, but you still will have this button here, which is our Create button. If we click on our Create button, it gives us a drop down. These are the ways in which we can create lessons in Nearpod. We can do a complete lesson with a content rich media um, and activities. We can do a video lesson in which we just use just strictly video to teach our lessons and integrate in questions. We can do an activity where we can pull in any of the activities that the student loves, such as Time to Climb. And lastly, Google Slides. We have those wonderful Google Slides that we've created throughout this, um, this school year and the, the previous school years. We can take those Google Slides and bring those into Nearpod and create lessons from those. We're gonna go to the lesson. Once we click on lesson, it will bring us to this screen. This is our motherboard, our dashboard for creating lessons. Um, the first thing that we want to do is we want to give our lesson a title. We're going to call this one our practice lesson number two because I've made several. This button right here is your settings for your lesson. If you wanted to put in a descriptor that will help you to find it easy, you can put it in here as well as your grade and the subject area that it will fall under. This just makes it easier to find within your library. And if you share your uh, slides with someone else, it also makes it easier for them to find. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to add in our content and our activities. The great thing about Nearpod is that content and activities are already available to us within our Nearpod library, or we can create our own. To add, we can either click here where it says to add new, or we can hover over the box and click. Once we click, it will give us an option. We can either do content or we can do activities. Content is usually your rich media lessons, such as your videos, your web content, your slides, and your audio. This is perfect for if you, uh, integrating audio visual within your lessons that has those questions for checking for understanding throughout the lesson. Our other option would be our activities. Activities are there to engage our students. The best thing about activities is that you are provided with immediate data and feedback to check your students' understanding, and it kind of helps you to determine which way you're going in the direction of your teaching. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to choose what do we want to put in our lesson first, and I think the first thing that I would like to do is to give my students an opportunity to discuss something. So we have options here of doing a collaboration board, so I'm going to click on collaboration. Here I can put in my topic, and the topic here can be food. And the question that I may want to ask my students is, tell me something that you like to eat and would eat every day. Once I do that, there are several options that I can choose to style my collaboration board. I can select one of those, and then I would press Save. Clicking on save, saves this into your lesson. And here is my collaboration board here. Students will be able to collaborate with other students within the classroom about their favorite food and what they would like to eat on a day-to-day -day basis or if they can eat it each day. To add in more content and activities, I would go back to my Add Content and Activities button and I would click here. This time, I think I want to include a video. So videos, again, are under your rich media content. So I would go to video. Videos can be pulled from our Nearpod library. They can be pulled from YouTube. You can actually upload a video here, or you can save videos into your library. I think we're going to search our library here for some food. Let's stay on topic. Here's a good one. It says, why spicy food tastes hot. So we're going to click on this one. And of course, before you want to vet it, you want to preview it to see if this is something that you think would be fitting for your lesson. 
You would include that into your lesson by clicking on Save, and it would automatically include it in your lesson. I do want you to take note that each time you see these blue dots, this is where we're checking for understanding after or during the time the students are watching the videos. If you hover over them, you will see questions. This is an open-ended question for them. You can at any time right here on this edit button, edit that question and change it out. Maybe the students aren't aware of what the word receptors are. You can change that so that it's fitting for your students. Once you change it, you click save and it will save it into the lesson. If you feel that this is an appropriate video, you would click save. And now that video has been included into your lesson. If you wanted to put the video before the collaboration board, these lessons or individual lessons can be moved around within Nearpod activity. Once you are done, click Save and Exit. And now your lesson has been added to your Nearpod library. It is now ready for live participation or student participation with your students.